Welcome back to another evening at Homestead in a Box. My name is Leah and I'm super grateful to have you here this evening. Tonight we're going to talk about organic pest control and what that looks like for me here on our homestead. Uh, I have mixed up a little mixture. I'm actually going to be spraying on some pea plants because uh, my peas have been taken over by aphids and I've actually allowed the aphids to take over them and I'll explain why I've done that here in just a bit. So come with me and let's go talk about organic pest control. First I want to say that if you are doing any type of organic gardening of any type that bugs, pests, and disease are pretty inevitable and you're going to have them. Um, I had to wrap my head around that at first because I was like I don't want pests and diseases in my garden but then whenever I did a little bit of reading to figure out a lot of the things that we go to Walmart and grab to help us uh, kill things on our plants and stuff it's not just killing our the bugs on our plants it's also killing the pollinators that are in our garden so I did have to wrap my head around that that if I was going to use organic methods here on our homestead that I was going to lose plants to pests and disease which is exactly what's happened to my pea plants so that's the first thing I knew we wanted to take a more natural approach to gardening and one thing I've read everywhere is for organic gardening is your fingers are the most natural approach that you can possibly have being out in your garden looking over your plants seeing what's on them um, that is the most natural approach that you can take here on these cantaloupe plants, you can see where squash bugs have started to lay babies. I come in and I'll zoom in and show you, but uh, I come in and I hand pick these off. Uh, every few days I get the babies off of them and, and I haven't sprayed this with anything yet. This is all just with my hands. I'm coming in hand picking. Um, that is my first approach is just walking through the garden. I walk through the garden a couple times a day and just seeing if I see any bugs and just picking them off. I was picking stink bugs off the other day and was squishing them between my fingers until a friend uh, tagged me in something and told me how I can actually get rid of stink bugs. So natural approach is using my hands. On those cantaloupe plants, you can see where the leaves have brown spots and things like that, where some of the leaves are kind of dying off. An important thing is to grow healthy plants. And one of the things that we do here to make sure that we're grow, trying to grow healthy plants is by constantly adding organic compost into our beds and into our containers. Um, I have a few videos over rabbit compost tea and just adding uh, some different mulch and things. I'm, act I'm actually going to put a quick video right here of the other day. I was actually mulching up straw and rabbit manure that come from under the rabbit pens after they had babies and things like that. I'm going to put that right here so you can watch that. So we've cleaned up from underneath the rabbits from where they all just had babies and they had straw in their nesting boxes. So you have straw mixed with a bunch of rabbit manure and I'm going to be mulching it up and this is what you get. I mulch it, I get wonderful rabbit poo and straw mulch together. I'm going to use this as a mulch and top my garden beds and container bags with it. All right, so adding that organic matter back to your garden and back to your containers is really important because it does help the structure and the fertility of the plant, which therefore creates a stronger plant that can actually help fight the pests and disease. So that is another important thing, uh, is making sure that you're growing healthy plants. Some of these pea plants I've already torn out, but you can see the discoloring, and we'll walk down here and I'll show you. Uh, but you can see this plant right here. You can see how it's brown and then it's green. It is just eaten up with aphids. And I'll get a close zoom in and just show you. Same with this uh, pea plant here. You can see where it's starting to die at the bottom. Really this one over here you can tell real good. And then the higher you come up, they're just working. The aphids are basically working their way up the pea plant. And now you may wonder why I'm letting the aphids take over my peas, and I'll explain that. 
Like I said, you may be asking why I'm actually letting the aphids take over my peas. There's a couple reasons. One, because it's fixing to get really hot here and the particular uh, variety of peas I'm growing don't do real great in the heat. Uh, secondly, because I'm using the pea plants as a trap plant. And when you're organic gardening, you, you need to use flowers and other plants like that as trap plants uh, to help um, direct the pest to something different. So right now I have a garden full of tomatoes and things like that and aphids really love tomatoes. And so keeping the peas at the back of the garden and just kind of letting the aphids eat on those peas is fingers crossed keeping them distracted from all of my tomato plants. Um, I really do try to work with all of the pests and things like that in the garden. Um, I, I keep the ladybug, I mean, that's why I don't use anything not organic because the ladybugs and the hoverflies, things like that help with aphids. Um, there's different, just birds and generally squash bugs. I just recently found out the other day because I was complaining about birds sitting on some of my trellises, but it really is a fascinating world. And if you work with the um, environment that you're in, if, if you work with it instead of against it, I do believe that uh, it will all work out in favor for you. But that is why I have allowed them to, the aphids to take over my pea plants. But today I'm actually going to be using this mix that I made uh, and spraying my pea plants just to see if it works to kill off the aphids because whatever the aphids don't kill, I'm actually gonna be pulling out and replacing and succession sowing something else in those containers after I add some organic matter and things like that to them. So let's go check out the recipe that I made and spray some aphids. Okay, so the mixture I make is uh, Dr. Broner's Peppermint Castile Soap, and then I mix uh, 10 drops of Young Living Rosemary, 10 drops of clove, and 10 drops of peppermint in the bottle, and then I finish filling it up with water is how I make this. And I've seen this recipe kind of all over the internet really so I'm fingers crossed that it works for me but let's spray this and then I'm going to come back in the morning and definitely see if it works if you're not following us on social media go follow us on Facebook and Instagram because uh, that's where I'll be posting the results to see if this actually works supposedly the soap uh, traps the aphids and doesn't really allow them to move. Let's see how they're acting. They're kind of going a little crazy. Seeing eyes of mine What do you feel beside all right, so I will come back in the morning and see how the aphid situation is going. Uh, I am very well aware that I could have went in with my fingers and killed off a lot of the aphids. Um, they're just in bags, and so it's kind of contained, and uh, it got really out of hand really fast. And like I said, I was willing to use them as a trap plant to hopefully keep the aphids away from my tomatoes. Um, I have ants here. Uh, that I'm also trying to organically get rid of with cinnamon and a few other things. Um, and ants carry aphids, just in case you did not know that. They work together and they will help destroy your garden. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for coming and hanging out with me this evening. I'm sending you good vibes as always. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I'd really appreciate it if you took a minute and just click the button the subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified when I do release new content and like I said sending you guys good vibes as always send some to somebody that you know and I will see you later in the week probably harvesting all of these beautifully grown carrots. <laughs>